I'm your host, Tiffany Glenland, an Australian business and mindset coach with 10 years experience in online marketing and the creator of the Business Bravery Framework. I help coaches to be brave so you can sign more clients even if you hate marketing and sales feel icky. From signing your next paying clients through to launching that dream group coaching program, the Business Bravery Framework helps you take bigger leaps without the mindset spirals. It's helped my clients double their investment in me, make thousands of dollars, and truly build their dream business. In this episode, I had the pleasure of chatting again with Rebecca Nesbitt, who is the founder of the CEO Crowd, a community of business owners with Real Women Vibes, a safe space online for entrepreneurs to connect, collaborate, and promote. With 10 plus years in coaching, including careers, life, relationships, sales, and business, Rebecca has a wealth of knowledge as a facilitator. In a nutshell, her business, the CEO Crowd, helps you to connect to yourself, your purpose, and your business besties to make your dreams a reality. This is my second time chatting with Rebecca. The first was in episode 12, a little over 12 months ago, and since then she has transitioned from coaching to running this amazing community. I was really excited to discuss the transition and the bravery that required. With that said, this is an amazing episode and I can't wait to share with you Rebecca's stories of business bravery this time focused on the last 12 months. (laughs) Now, who's ready for some business bravery inspiration? Let's dive in. Okay, everyone, I am so excited to be here with the amazing Rebecca Nesbitt again. This is, this is really awesome. This is the first time I've done like a revisit with somebody who was on the podcast about 12 months ago-ish or so. And yeah, I'm so excited to talk with Rebecca. She was on episode 12 previously. Definitely tune in and listen to that. But yeah, now we're talking about some things that have changed in her business, some kind of pivots and some of the bravery around that and as well as like what brave things she's doing and all of the goodness that Rebecca has to offer and I'm I'm so excited I've been a part of her membership for I don't know most of this last year and yeah very excited to chat all all of these good things so Rebecca thank you so much for joining us again oh I'm so excited to be here yeah Yeah, I'm excited to be here again we have a returner that's gonna be so much fun so I've really been looking forward to this. I love any time I get to spend with you, Tiff, it's always a gift. So I'm just really excited for anyone that's listening to get to be on a, be a fly on the wall of our conversations because they're always really magical. Awesome. Yep. Thanks so much. And me too. I, I always enjoy chatting with you. Yeah, You've taught me so many things and yeah, I'm always interested in your, like every, your perspective. That's the word. I, I speak English, I promise. I'm German, I believe. Yeah, that is my very poor second language and Korean is my even poorer third language. So yeah, there we go. I didn't know that. How interesting. Thank you for sharing that. But yeah, I spent a couple of years living in South Korea. So I picked up enough to be able to get in a taxi, order at a restaurant, tell people I'm not American, I'm Australian. You know, the basics, right? Basics, so, yeah. Yeah. I believe I know the same in Romanian, but Mm. not about being Australian, not American, just about being Scottish. Yeah. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Okay, sorry. So I'd love to hear, last time we caught up with you, you were into coaching and one-on-one coaching and maybe like launching a group program. But since then, I know that you have a whole bunch of other cool things going on and like tell us about like what you're doing, what the change has been, what you're doing now and all of that good stuff. Of course. So the last time that we spoke, that's accurate, I was doing one-to-one coaching. I had a group coaching program and I had just launched networking events that were going really, really well. And A few things happened at the same time when it came to the transition of our business from Soul Happy Success Coaching to the CEO crowd and what you're a part of today and the membership program that we run. So first of all, there was this surge in excitement, energy and uptake of networking events that was really, really powerful. And those networking events had come out of me going to an in-person event, noticing that everyone was there to connect, 
but that was really not being facilitated. What was being facilitated was let's all listen to the speaker on stage as if they are the guru and take on the information. And then we'll kind of get to chat over lunch, maybe. And we'll have to do all of our connection after. And we'll have to add more time to everyone's diary. And while I think that's wonderful to connect with people after events, I think that also you kind of have to get to know the people that you really want to invest all of that time with. Because one, as an entrepreneur, it's a smart business decision. Two, as someone who suffers with chronic pain, which Tiff, I know that you understand, you have to be super mindful of what you take on. And three, in terms of just alignment with your life and how much time do you want to spend trying to connect with 200 other people in the room. So I think that when I was at that event, something that I didn't really realize for a few months after we spoke was how much that had really impacted me to create what I've created now. So there was the business strategy side where I was like, this is popping off, it's going well, people want to know what's next, what do I create? So there was the business side, but then there was also the alignment with my life side. So a year ago, uh, my husband was in grad school. He's actually just about to graduate, which is really exciting. And we were having conversations about, you know, what does our life look like? We had not been long married and we really want to start a family. At the time, I was the sole income earner of our family. So that obviously has with it its own pressures. And I kind of thought to myself, well, if I had to take time off, what does that look like? How could I do that? And do I just wait until my husband has finished school and sells his first book? And then I think, okay, well, we're in a financially stable place where we can do this. Or do I create something where I'm not scaling my time in terms of one-to-one clients? Because if I'm scaling my time and I then have actively less time, how is that going to work? Mm -hmm. Or do I scale a group program? Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, I scale a group program. That makes more sense because I'm not scaling my time. I'm actually scaling my capacity to earn within that time. Mm -hmm. So the business strategy also like pokes its head in too. Like there's, there's always a yin and a yang. And I then realized that launching and relaunching and relaunching the same group program doesn't fill me with joy I love new things I just do like I think it's so fun to create something out of someone else needing it and necessity so then I started to think how could I then do that with people and then continue to pay me (laughs) and that looked like a membership program But also I believe that membership programs speak really well to this aspect of community, which to wrap this up in a bow and come back to the original point was what I was not seeing at in-person events I was attending. Mm -hmm. I was seeing someone on stage telling you how to live your life and then you kind of going away and trialing out some of these things. And I don't think that's bad. I think there's a time and a place and that that's really important too. But to not actually connect people, I think, is such a disservice because there are other wonderful minds in the room that may be able to speak directly to you. So let's take, for instance, something we've already spoken about that we can connect on, Tiff. If you have someone on stage saying, just get up an hour earlier and like work out really hard in the morning, I'm going to be like, I'm sorry, does your body feel like it's on fire when you wake up? Does it? Because if it doesn't, then we're on a different playing field. So maybe there's someone else actually I need to talk to for this particular piece of advice. So like I say, I don't think that speakers are bad. I think they're actually wonderful. I think they're a way that a lot of people come to personal development. It's a way that I came to personal development. But there is a huge missed opportunity in those spaces that I wanted to create something for and around so that we could actually put community back in community. 
-hmm. as opposed to labeling it community and then have just one person speak at people that's not community it's not community to go into a group and say hi my name's Rebecca I'm a Taurus do you want to be friends and hear crickets that's not community either so mm -hmm. I wanted to craft something that really filled a need for people but it also fulfilled me really personally and worked with who I am so essentially what I was looking at was is this in alignment and that's why we transitioned from a one-to-one -one higher ticket model with occasional group programs into a membership community where that is the one thing that I do oh wow okay that's an amazing story and an amazing journey and I can definitely see like the decision points that went to oh you know oh yeah this led me to this and this led me to this and yeah and I especially I don't know the point that resonated with me and I don't know if that's going to resonate with everyone but just the part about you know I wanted to make it fun I wanted new things and that whole launching the same thing all of the time which is very standard advice and you know is a great fit for certain people and certain personalities and can be a great fit in the beginning while you're learning everything but yeah I don't know that one really resonates with me because at the moment like my sort of bravery stuff that I'm going through is like a lot of my business is a bit more systemized so that I can have a bit more work-life balance but it does there is an element of boredom around that for for me I'm finding so yeah there's a part of me that hears you go oh, you know I'm doing fun things all the time and I mean I imagine that's with like the the guest speakers in the membership and helping out all the members and everything because the the membership guys it's amazing like I really love being a part of it and uh, I can't wait until I can wake up a bit earlier in the morning to attend the calls because Australian time zone is fun in the winter time but yeah I just yeah love all of the things that you're doing and yeah I just I don't know do you have any wisdom for me who's like perhaps dealing with some of the that boredom I don't know I guess there's other ways to make to to bring fun into it and that kind of thing but yeah do I think I would start with to be fair good business is boring to a degree yeah and <laughs> are there are parts of the business that do you know if we're being real talk because entrepreneurs are usually like oh no everything's wonderful I attract clients left right and center everyone flows to me and I'm like that's nice not my experience <laughs> That's nice for you. So if we're being real talk, there are things about my business that I, I don't enjoy doing. I don't love outreach. So I did outsource that. It was one of the first things I outsourced in my business. In terms of that cold outreach, I love keeping communication going. I love yeah. having met someone and then have that connection and then be with that person. That gives me a lot of joy. So I noticed even kind of micro parts of each of the stages of business that you walk through that I like and or don't like. So I kind of started to outsource a lot of the stuff that wasn't filling me with joy. There's something that fills me with no joy ever. And one of our weekly emails, I find one of the paragraphs is so hard for me. <laughs> like so hard. I will sit for at least an hour and 15 minutes to write one paragraph for this email every single week and it's so like not fun and I try and make it joyful and I'm like racking my brain for how we can change it but the challenge is that we always get feedback we always get someone email me back as soon as I have that thought of like maybe I just don't do the email the next day someone emails and they're like I really need to hear that and I'm like gosh darn it okay so I keep going so I I understand those points that they feel really boring and you're just like oh I know I'm gonna have to sit down with this and it doesn't fill with joy but I think that what I what I think of as fun and joy within the program that's where I get like all of my joy like within the membership is where I get all of the joy. I get joy from answering mm -hmm. questions. I get joy from supporting people. I get joy from directing people. I get joy from hosting calls and being live with people. And that's why, you know, our program is predominantly a live program. Whether we have 
and I'm using program and membership interchangeably. Just want to highlight that. But our membership is is largely live. There are replays. We don't have replays for everything because I think that that's a waste of everyone's time to record a, a co-working session where everyone's working for 30 minutes and playing music. It's just not, not smart yeah. decision to watch those back. But the reason we do things live is because I think that we've gotten to this culture of like, I'll just catch the replay. And while for some instances, that's great. So for example, for you, it being super early morning, having replays of those things that connect you to us. So things like replays of master classes or book clubs, hugely beneficial. But we want to keep it live because we want people to stay engaged. Mm. Like you, yeah. you should want to be with people because we want to be with you. Mm. And I think that's a really big basis of what we do. And that brings me a lot of joy mm. because things that actually bring me significant joy are when people say that's a terrible idea it won't work and I do it anyway oh my God, I love that I mean, do you have an example do, do you have an example yes <laughs> I do and you'll love this because I was speaking to our marketing team and spoiler alert Tiffany yeah we are introducing live courses into the CEO crowd at no extra cost on a separate day because it will be so joyful and I'm so excited mm. and I spoke to the marketing team about it and I was like I know this is a typical business strategy I know that you think I should upsell this mm. because as a smart business model you have the membership but then you have the group programs then you have your one-to-one -one. I have no intention of doing those things mm. I have full intention of taking care of the people I have mm. so if I'm happy with my business, it doesn't really have to make sense for anyone else. So I was speaking to the marketing team and I said, I know it goes against business strategy. And I know that you might think it's a terrible idea, but I'm, I'm going to do it. So if we could work out a way of how we do it, that would be great. And I'm very fortunate that my marketing person was just like so kind. Her name is Heather. She was so kind. She was like, okay. But I think that what you need to say in your marketing is my marketing team thinks this is a terrible idea. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. <laughs> um, so we do have, I'm, I'm crafting a lot of captions behind the scenes and my social media content, ironically not out yet, is like flowing. I have, I think, 16 very curated posts ready to go. My I, my aim is to get to 30. and then to just kind of get the ball rolling with social media again because I do feel like I needed almost to take a break to reset this energy of like the next evolution is I really am stepping into I'm going to do this my way and I think that's how everyone should run their business so that's what I would say on that Tiff is that yes I did have a very clear example of bucking the trend and that gives me significant joy so I think that it's finding joy in what it is that you do and then the extra things that can be outsourced, can you outsource them? And if you do have something that's not bringing you joy, it's just double checking that it really is valuable for other people because the reason that I keep doing that email is because it's valuable for other people and that's where I find the joy in it. So yeah. sometimes it's about finding those like micro moments of joy and they may be so small, yeah. <laughs> but they're so worth it and I know that when it comes to your bravery work I've seen the impact those sessions have had on women that they've seen that they've had on myself I have heard women in your group talk about how wonderful it is I've heard one person just like literally breaking her heart over how many groups she wanted to be a part of and highlighting that your group really stood out so I think that what you're doing is so wonderful mm. And I understand that sometimes there can be that like little rub of like, oh, it's a little bit boring. And I just, again, like if I can have conversations about anything now, it usually is around alignment. It's just checking, mm -hmm. is this an alignment? Like, is the, are the bravery workshops at the particular times you've chosen to put them in? Is the bravery group, are they in alignment with you now? Because mm -hmm. they might've been in alignment four mm -hmm. months ago. Yeah. But 
now? How does mm-hmm. it feel? And I think sometimes it's cutting off those things that don't feel aligned. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, yeah. cutting off social media for the last, I think, month for me because it wasn't aligned. Smart decision. We've grown every single week. Mm. Which okay. is very strange because we've put out nothing new I just talk on my stories and I meet people that's literally it Mm -hmm. and we don't actually ironically we don't source leads through Instagram we source all of our leads through Facebook and our Instagram is the platform that's growing I don't understand why so both platforms are growing but Instagram is very confusing for many reasons so yeah I think that cutting that off for a period of time to say I'm going to park that I'm going to work on something different. Like my content was stagnant and I needed to work on something different because it wasn't filling with joy. It wasn't exciting. And it's a part of your business is actually really important. So I hope within there, there was some kind of answer or inspiration for you in those moments of boredom that it's either like yeah. find some kind of micro joy or cut it off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or, or outsource it. Yeah. Or outsource it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's really interesting, like you stopped doing social media, like you stopped posting to the feed, but you were still posting to stories. And especially because like the people who attend your networking calls and even the the calls in the membership, right, they're all sharing all of those posts and everything. So I can understand why, like in stories and everything, can understand why that still grows from, from those actions at, at the least. So, yeah. Awesome. Okay. So something else that you said in there, there was something else, there was a question, but I've lost it now. So that might come back to me. We'll see. But something I did want to ask is like your transition from doing coaching to the membership. Did you have any, this seems like a crazy question because I don't think your personality, I think your personality might be a a no to this, but were there ever any times where it was like, oh, this feels harder than I thought it was going to be or like you know were there any sort of moments of doubt that you had to get through anything like that or did it all just fall into place like some of guys some of Rebecca's natural talents is like really talking to people connecting with people attracting them to these group things and everything definitely skills I'm still building and I'm always some of it some of the time I'm like what would Rebecca do so like do you know what I mean it's just like so yeah it's just did you ever have anything like that or yeah or or did you notice like like there must have been a time where maybe your income dropped because you had less people in the membership or some of that stuff I I don't know where this air of like it all fell into place comes from I'm really sorry if I've presented that to anyone (laughs) not the case and Yes, like huge, huge doubts. And I've I've mm. said this on a few um platforms as well as my own, is having a nine thousand dollar day one month and then and the next month you have a forty nine dollar day. It's very different. It is something that takes a second for your mind to get around. And I think I was able to get through it because I understood that at scale it wouldn't look like that. We plan to scale to 200 members. We don't want above 200 members. And the reason for that being is that it is still a community and we want to make sure that everyone genuinely knows each other. And I can keep about 200 people in my brain very comfortably (laughs) at the one time. So I came from, and I know this is in, you know, Hmm. 700 people that were just on my school role in my brain at the one time. So I came from an environment where that was very normal. So now feeling like 200 feels like really good to me. I feel like I can have a decently in-depth understanding of someone's business at that level. So at scale, then $49 was what our membership used to be. When it, when it first started, we had a monthly pricing program back then for almost our launch of the business. We've since doubled our prices and made it an annual only fee because we really think that community you need over time there will be a month where you will not engage and Mm. you will like essentially burn everything down and you'll maybe need that 49 dollars and I totally get it because I've been that kind of struggling entrepreneur before myself too 
and you'll cut the membership and you will cut off everything that can get you back into doing the business work. Yeah. You will essentially self-sabotage to a degree because of fear. And if you have already made that investment, the interesting thing is, is that when... Hang on, if you cut out again. Sorry. The, you, oh, the interesting so thing is... Sorry. That's okay. So the interesting thing is that we typically don't think about that 997 program after we've paid it. Mm. But that monthly recurring, we think about all the time. So yes, it is an initial investment now, but I believe that in the long run, it will create something really, really powerful for people. And it will be a space where people are held. So to come back to the point, because that's mm. just talking about pricing structures. Yeah. The shift from $9,000 to $49 is mm -hmm. really big. But when you think about membership is so different because it's recurring revenue, mm -hmm. that may be $9,000 from one person in nine years. Or maybe we do a retreat that's $5,000 and it's quicker. Like, who knows? We're not ruling that out because I think that would be so much fun. But... We're vibing on Bali too for the retreat, just saying. And I feel like you'll love that because it's a lot closer to you. So, yeah, it is. That's so yeah. affordable for me. That's like my Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> so I will keep you posted, but that will be a few years down the line, I believe. And that mindset shift, it was a, it was a lot. And there was a lot of doubt in off. I cut off all my other revenue. I don't take on one to one clients anymore. I have recurring one-to-one -one clients I've had for the longest time and a lot of them are coming to the end of their contracts and should they renew I will absolutely keep them because I love them you know the clients that you just have forever and you're just like these are the coolest people yeah. then I completely understand that but I'm not in a position of taking on anyone else it's not something that I promote it's not something I talk about it's not something I offer mm -hmm. because everything is going into the membership and the financial discrepancy was a lot. And if you want to hear more about finances, then please refer to the last podcast we did which was all about finances and how to, you know, be a child with a bank account. But the other thing was, it's so different to sell a membership than it is to sell one-to-one. One-to-one, mm. -one, I'm an excellent salesperson. I will say that about myself. Mm. And I love to really be in it with people. Mm -hmm. So the sales calls itself are a transformation because we get really into what's going on, we get really into the vision. Mm -hmm. And then here's the support that you need. I mm -hmm. will craft it. I will do whatever it is that I can do within my capacity to create this experience for you to walk through. Very good at that. Mm -hmm. Trying to sell a membership where it's just a sales page is totally different. Okay, yeah. Totally different, totally different sales process. Totally mm. different. And not only that, it's still at scale, but your numbers are the same. So you have to consider that I work on this kind of pyramid basis of if you're looking for one client at the top, that's probably 10 in-depth conversations you have to have which mm -hmm. is probably a hundred baseline conversations that you have to have, which probably takes a thousand actions to find the right people. Mm -hmm. So the numbers don't change, but what you make at the end of the day does. But because the time is leveraged, it's worth it. So I think there was a lot mentally that I had to work through. And also I had to look at all of my processes for lead generation. Lead generation had to like 10X so that we could have the, the ability to run the membership. We also had to look at our finances as a family and say like, this is a, this is a two year play. Mm -hmm. This is what we're looking at. Yeah. yeah. And we had to consider that we were fortunate to have finances in the bank that made this possible so I was able to take a really big jump because I had a lot of support. Mm. So to answer your question, Tiff, yes, many doubts, <laughs> many doubts, much drama. Mm. And if my husband was here, I'm sure he would tell you a lot more about it. Many, like not sleepless nights because I sleep really well. Actually, I'm a great sleeper, but 
a lot of a lot more stress Mm -hmm. and that's been something that really since the beginning of this year we launched the the membership in September last year since the beginning of this year it's really been getting a handle on this new version of work-life balance because Mm -hmm. we had a really powerful start to the year in January we onboarded 21 people in one month which was insane 16 in one day while I was on a flight from Hawaii it was just the most insane day of my whole life and after that then I started to realize like wow I have gotten this work-life balance thing so off because I've been so excited to build this and I'm starting to see now that I actually need to reduce the stress that's in my body need to reduce the stress that's in my life and need to return to the joy of what was building the CEO crowd Mm -hmm. because there comes a point where I think we do push ourselves so hard because we have that but this should be why is this not nine thousand dollars a day I'm so confused and there's that like hustle culture of just do more and it's been a it's been an experience to Mm. break that down so I think that that's probably the latest challenge but Mm. I will say from what feels like the other side it's going very well (laughs) okay so I need to ask you then how did you 10x your lead generation was that just by hiring someone to help or I know this is something we can all take hints at even if we're not building a membership or going from one thing to another how did you do that because like you said the 1000 actions, there's still only so much time in a day. So yeah. What, what are all your secrets, please? Yeah. I mean, our our lead generation is very basic right now. We're just looking into ads now. So you will start to see them kind of pop up, but the lead generation itself, because everything to this point has been organic, has been Facebook groups or goldmine like if someone is building a business and they don't have any money Facebook groups will fund whatever you need them to fund like Facebook groups are incredible and I think it also came with having a really good offer mm-hmm. I think there's a difference between hi I'm a health coach let me help you because you look like you need help and that can be offending to some people and there's there's you know there's a difference between that and saying hey, I run a network for female entrepreneurs and you're a female entrepreneur that's probably prospecting me. I'll just prospect you instead. We do a lot of that work. We get a lot of Facebook requests, friend requests because of what we post. We post very consistently in Facebook groups. We're talking like two to three posts every single week in the same group. Mm. And We change up the creatives for that every so often. Myself and my lead gen specialist, And genuinely, she does all that work. We use some AI, not AI, but some automation services that help us. One is called Devi, I believe. Oh, right. Yeah. Yep. Write it down. (laughs) D-I-V-I. And that helps us. I believe that helps us to source people. That helps us to kind of look for keywords and pull them all into one place so that we're not wasting time just like scrolling a million posts. So that's been really helpful. Mm-hmm. Um and then I think just being consistent with with posting. And we have a mixture of direct ask posts saying, hey, we run this community. We have over, I believe right now it's 275 people are in our network. Would you like to connect with them? I mean, what female business owner is going to say no? That's like genius. I'm going to put you in front of a lot of people. So yes, absolutely. So we really make people offers that are hard to refuse because they they seem too good to be true and they are true. And I think that's the difference is that when we create something, the intention is always to go into it and completely over deliver. So anyone that comes into our network is in our network. And that means that, They can come to one of our events per year that's a really intimate networking event, pitch their business, ask for what they need. And then every Monday after that, they'll get an opportunities email from us with the replay of the networking event that they have then not attended because we only offer one if you're not one of our members. Hmm. And this email is full of opportunities every week. It's like leads that you don't have to source. Like, 
of course. Yeah. This is and then also we do quarterly events to bring people into our CEO crowd so that our members can start to meet some of our network and so that they can create closer collaborations. So we really make people a really great offer and then we deliver on it. And I think that's what's sometimes missing in the space. And that's a that's a whole other conversation if you want to go there. But I think that's why it works so well. I think that it is very consciously generation so it's not just like do a million posts and you'll like make a million dollars it's actually be very specific with we do things like give tips around networking our creatives have just shifted into a little bit more dramatic around like being burned by business programs that charge you thousands of dollars and then don't okay, look yeah. after you and you know we yeah. are we are shifting our marketing because I feel so strongly about that for people mm. and it's going it's going well what can I say mm. I mean we changed up our creatives and I think we had like 40 friend requests last week so all of these friend requests mm. obviously we monitor those too because if you just like respond to every single one that's a waste of your time. Some of those people are lead generating for other people. So we have a little process that we kind of check in on them and see if they are the right fit for us before we take time to respond and build a relationship. Hmm. But those are some of the ways that we that we do our lead gen and that we've done it organically. And a lot of that is to the credit of, I'll, I'll shout her out if it's okay. It's okay hmm. for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, Alicia Barnes is incredible. She's hmm. really, really wonderful at what she does. She really cares about our company and our values and she really cares about the people that she connects with and she always wants to do such a great job and she is, we have two mm. guardian angels in the business, none of them are me and um, the other is our VA, Sarah, she's wonderful too. So I would say that the lead generation, the credit has to go to Alicia. I set up this to pitch that and she has done the majority of the work. Before that, it was me and I was just very conscious of, I have to do X amount of conversations per day but that has been significantly easier over time because people see us so frequently in groups now oh nice yeah, yeah. it cut out for a minute there you said you set up the system and then Alicia came in and I'm guessing she maybe tweaked it and refined it is that right or just because it cut out while you were talking yeah. yeah so Alicia came in so I had kind of started the system of this is what we say and this is what we do Alicia then came in and really refined the process and made it happen. Mm. Before Alicia, I was just like, these are how many conversations I have to create a day. But that's significantly draining for me. Like that's the part of my business that's quite boring. Whereas Alicia's kind of really our guardian angel in that. She does a lot of that work because she loves that initial connection. She mm. loves that. And she's so good at it. <laughs> Yeah, that's just like her her zone of genius. And I think that, you know, that's why outsourcing is so powerful. And it's not something everyone can do mm. before financially. The membership could have invested in her because mm. I knew how much space it would give me mm. as an entrepreneur to make the business itself better. Mm. And that was a hundred times worth the money mm -hmm. and she has just been a superstar so I would say that's really how we 10x the lead gen is that we just went very hard on Facebook groups and we made sure that we were connecting with everyone in direct messages mm. oh okay awesome thank you for for sharing that part and I just love all of the steps and the explanation something I do want to say is like Rebecca has training in the membership on like how she does that whole stuff with the groups and and everything um, yeah it was such an um, amazing session to to see that and oh, I just remember it's just really funny because it's like my brain just always wants to make it harder than it is and like Rebecca's like oh it's just you know you just do this and you just do that and it's so easy and and, and not not in this way that's like oh the guru person saying it's easy they don't know what I'm going through it just it was actually it made it feel easier for me it was like actually yeah I am I'm overthinking this like for me I have issues with Facebook groups some of them they're like oh you can't post that that's too salesy and stuff like that and it's like groups I'm paying to be in 
to connect me and they don't actually let me really connect right it's like you can only post in these particular threads that nobody sees right the the whole what are you offering thread and that's one of the things I really love about your group it just feels so different to that like there's always a way to connect with others on those calls it's totally okay like even on the co-working calls you get to talk like a lot of us get to talk about what we're up to and connect with each other at the same time it's yeah like real actual connection not this I'm running a networking group but I don't want people to network like I just <laughs> that one so yeah that's yeah I, yeah and I to build a, cr a group and a community but I think they all want them to pay them I think that if they are to introduce someone else that does a masterclass they want like the referral fee and oh, right. I just think that I don't demonize sales for myself mm. so why would I do it for other people I remember the last time I was on this podcast I spoke about a mastermind myself and my husband had invested in mm. and such an interesting experience and that is a community that essentially is this is this person's community you cannot promote you cannot do this you cannot do that and I was like, I paid $25,000 to be here. I was like, and I can't do anything. I was like, this is pointless. And that's where you get into people post value. Mm. And that's how that's how you connect with people. So there's always a way around it. It's like promo, but no promo. There yeah. is a way around it. Um, mm. But I, I do think that those spaces are very problematic for entrepreneurs and I think it's because that person that's leading it has to a degree or believes that they've created something that's so magical that everyone must buy it, but they're not considering that people have different needs. Mm. Yeah. And I just don't have that big an ego. Like I don't, I don't think I ever have the right answer. I think all my advice is unsolicited and I've had extensive coaching training through university and I could tell everyone how to live their life, but I'm not living their life. So I don't know, like that's something that people have to come to themselves. And that's why you use open questions and active listening as a coach. It's why you don't just tell people what to do because you're not that person. Mm. So if there is something in the way, that's your job. Like as the coach, like help them figure that out. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them they have to be someone that they're not. Mm -hmm. Don't tell them they have to do things that they're like, this doesn't work for me. I've tried it. I've tried it a million ways. Then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Unless you really want to do it. And then if you really want to do it, you'll do it. I, I just, I have a lot of gripes. <laughs> to... That's awesome. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Just with the way that community is, is run and it's being promoted and it rarely is. And I'm just like, wait, where were the communities where we were all really kind to each other? We actually cared about each other. I want you to win. So why would I not think that your coaching should have a place? And we have, like you spoke about Lead Gen Live. Mm. So our generation training is in the portal for our membership clients. And we also have someone else in our membership that has a lead gen course that I have actively promoted for that person because if they didn't get it from me, they need to hear it from someone else. My voice isn't the voice that time and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that once you get to maybe a certain level, maybe I'm just not there yet, but once you get to a certain level and you think that you can solve everyone's problems, mm -hmm. then you get very defensive of your community and like who speaks to them and what they're told and they can't hear anything different than what you say. And I'm like, it's just, I mean, people talk about sales being ick, but like, that's the real ick is people that think that coaching is just your avenue to give people advice that you think is right for their life. That is not your life. Mm. and they should pay you for it and they should also never seek anyone else's support even if they're in community with them because the community is really not community with all the other people it's community with one person that's speaking at them and not actually communicating back so mm. yeah many gripes if. yeah 
Yeah, oh, I 100% agree with that. And I think that that's actually a, a lot around the ego. And I know like we had a conversation or you you did something in the membership recently where you were talking about the hustle. And it's like, if you find yourself hustle, 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 then that's the ego at play. And I have a podcast that's coming out where I'm talking about that. And I mentioned you in it because that was an eye opener because it was like, for me, like I have a natural, like I'm ready to work hard for my dreams. However, yeah, it's been something of a whole mind shift to be like, okay, how can I work smarter and maybe not just do all of the hours, but you pointing out that that's really the ego at play. I was wondering if you could talk more to that from your perspective, hopefully I haven't covered it all. <laughs> and just, yeah, it's, it's that same with that whole, here's my opinion and I don't want you to listen to anyone else. If you're coaching with me, you don't coach with others and all of that stuff too. I think that's all the ego. So I was wondering what tips do you have for us <laughs> to perhaps maybe not fall into the ego trap other than be more aware maybe, but... I mean, I think you maybe even answered it perfectly just in that sentence. I think that it is awareness question of what game are you playing? So I'm going to explain this in a gym analogy because coaches love a good gym analogy. Don't we love like it's like building muscle at the gym. But what I will say is I recently went back to CrossFit. We've had a few conversations about mm -hmm. my life yeah. in CrossFit. And I go three times a week. I don't go when I'm on my period. And that was too much information for some listeners. I appreciate you. I'm sorry. But I'm very specific with when I go and what I do and how hard I work out. Today, I had insane amounts of energy. I lapped my husband. I felt really good about it. It's always a good day when, when I can overtake my husband, even though he's lifting something that's twice as heavy as me. I'm like, bro, I did good though. <laughs> so... I had a lot of fun today, but let's come back to the analogy of the ego. So I will go into the CrossFit gym every single day and see someone lift something far too heavy the wrong way, push their body to the point where they're so exhausted, but they're just trying to like fling themselves into a movement. And I catch myself doing that. And this is this awareness piece. I catch myself doing that too. I... I said to my husband today, I was like, I would have no repped myself a few times. That means when you don't give yourself the, the repetition of the skill because it wasn't that great. And I said to my husband today, I was like, I would have had a few no reps in there for sure. There were a few times I stepped on that box and I didn't go all the way. I didn't stand all the way up. I just got back down. And I think that it's such a powerful place for me to observe that. And I get to do that quite regularly because I'm very rarely around other people. So I think that's why I come to the gym analogy because then I see those people not turn up next week. Mm. Then I see those people complain about how they've hurt themselves and they have to do the scaled option because they can't do the RX version, which is like the top tier version because they've hurt themselves. Mm. And I don't want that. I want longevity out of my body out of my body and out of life and I want to have joy in my workouts and I think about business the same way so I think that when we do hustle so hard that we hurt something maybe it's not your body maybe sometimes for us it is right but maybe it's your confidence maybe it's your vision your ego gets in the way is because we've pushed so, so hard. And that's the ego. It's because we push so far past our limitations. We've not taken care of ourselves, And now you've just put yourself back. Whether it's in the gym or whether it's in your business, it's the same, it's the same concept. Is when we feel like we have to, usually because everyone else is. Because ironically, I mainly see this in the dudes group of CrossFit. There is at, at the 5 a.m. This is the real deal of aftermath strength. I hope they never listen. But should they, I adore you guys. There is a group of guys and they are always at the same side of the gym and they always like work out together. My husband has now been indoctrinated into this group occasionally. And 
they all lift really heavy and they're all trying to outlift each other and outshine themselves from the week before and they're all you know in that kind of bro mentality of like let's lift hard do hard things train hard rah and none of them stretch apart from my husband who's very good at stretching but none of them stretch and them take care of themselves and then they wonder why they hurt the next time or they wonder why their the weight is not coming off they wonder so many things and it's purely because that workout was completely out of ego and cortisol it wasn't out of being in your body it wasn't out of listening to yourself it wasn't out of taking care of yourself and they're always the ones that are hurt and every time I observe them I'm like where am I doing this yeah. and that's again like I think that you genuinely answered it in is mm-hmm. it just awareness because mm-hmm. it really is awareness of like where am I just pushing and it's just pointless like mm-hmm. why do I feel like I need to push and some things that I want to push in my business is you know higher rates of signups for things because when we go to numbers higher rates of mm-hmm. signups means higher people come into your programs right mm-hmm. so I'll find myself push for those things but quite often when I've really pushed really hard and I actually did this for an in-person event in Houston I pushed so hard for that event and two people came. We had capacity for nine. And I pushed so hard, so hard, so hard to have the same two people that signed up at the very beginning. Ooh. And I was like, this is just because I'm like, this has to happen mm-hmm. because this first event has to be booked out and all the things. Mm. And I just don't play that game anymore. We have an event in Edinburgh and from the time of this recording in two weeks time. And we have four signups so far, two potentials. And I've really barely spoken about it. I've not messaged a single person directly. Mm. And yeah. I'm like, oh, how funny. <laughs> like, I think that sometimes, like, if the ego gets in the way and we're pushing and we're just hustling and it's hard and it feels hard and we're not enjoying it, then that's where the problems show up for me personally. When I'm having fun and in flow and like today I put out a post and it was just me with a Dishoom chai latte. Dishoom is a a restaurant in Edinburgh and I'm like the two things that I'm going to do first when I get to Edinburgh. One, go for a Dishoom chai latte and two, invite you to this event. (laughs) That was it. And I was like, I got so much joy from that. I love that photo of me with the latte and Mm -hmm. I love telling people that lattes are on me at this event. Like come along. That gives me a lot of joy we'll have signups from that because it brings me joy because I'm not like pushing and forceful and hustling and ego because that's when you you don't find any joy in your business and nothing works then because then it's a matter of perspective so I love at the very beginning you were like I I love your perspective I'm so grateful for that and that's such a huge compliment so thank you so much because it's this perspective of like why does it have to be that way that's the, the ego's like it has to be this way and it's thinking yeah. like why mm, like, yeah. you're talking about business strategy like why does it have mm. to look like everyone else mm, yeah. why does the room have to be full yeah yeah because because the ego is it's the opinion let's get into conditioning work again a whole other yeah. conversation but when we have that awareness the deeper level of working out what that where that awareness comes from is looking at your conditioning and a lot mm. of that will be societal because yeah. when it comes to entrepreneurship it's when you see you know you scroll past on social media it's the lion roaring saying like mm. sleep less work more and you're like oh my god also <laughs> the lions ironically it's a male lion and it's like bro the girls hunt for you this doesn't make any sense but <laughs> It's when you scroll past those and that's societal conditioning. It's when you look at other entrepreneurs that are telling you a million things that you should do, then your ego internalizes that. So it's like to get these things, you have to just work every hour that God will send you. And you mm-hmm. have to work so hard and you have to break down. Everyone's having breakdowns. So so should you. everyone's burning out. So why don't you burn out to you? those dudes in the gym? until we break something Mm. until we hurt something and there are so many facets of what that could be for your business 
as well as for your mental state when it comes to your business mm, yeah so I hope that answers your question oh yeah 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 sorry yeah yeah it definitely answers my question sorry for the delay you, you cut out and I didn't want to be interrupting your flow but yeah that's been my experience with like my latest launch and and it's been a repeating pattern of mine with the launches and for me I found it was and I've done a whole a couple of podcast episodes on this and everything which would be out by the time people hear this they're not out at the time of recording but it was for me it was that being really attached to the outcome and that whole you know it's like oh I'm a worthy human if I get these results like that's for me when my ego kicks in and then I push really hard and like and like <laughs> anything that you push that hard on it's like it repels it away from you <laughs> it's just like people smell the desperation or something you know like they just find something's not right and yeah it's a real lessons of mine to be for me it's like staying in this more like cool calm collected state and (laughs) being a bit bit like you know hey yeah if this happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't and that's cool and that's uh, not necessarily my personality like sometimes that's my personality genuinely for things but when it comes to business stuff and and the money and the income it, it's so hard, so much harder for that so yeah I'd be um, interested to hear this more personal question you don't have to answer it because this is your podcast but I'd be really interested to hear where you feel like the conditioning for your business comes from like is there any experiences that you've had that you feel like this dictates how I think about things when it comes to I should hustle. I am, if I get X, then I'm a worthy human. Like, where did that come from? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's definitely my relationship with my father. As a kid, my father was perfectionist and, you know, like when <laughs> had very strong views about, you know, how I should be living my life and, you know, what a worthy human was and that kind of thing. And he was not backward in telling me those things, right, and making it known. So, yeah, and as a kid, you don't really know any better. So you go along with that stuff. And so it's been kind of a lifetime effort in my adult years of, like, unraveling a lot of that stuff. And, like, from his perspective, like, that was him. That's how he was raised that's how he raised a good human, you know, like that was him being perfect. But for, for me, yeah, it's, it was very hard with, with some of that sort of stuff. So yeah, there, there was probably a lot of, you know, like, oh, what did you get wrong on that test? You know, I got 99 out of 100. What'd you get wrong? You know, some of, some of that stuff that I think lends into, to a lot of that sort of thing. So it's, like the results, the numbers in my bank account and things like that very tight, have been very tied into my worthiness. So yeah, that's definitely the stuff that I, I'm i unravelling. <laughs> and I share this stuff on my podcast too. So. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, for me, much much like you with your community and your approach, for me, like I can't show up as a coach and be all like, hey guys, here's how you work through this. It never happens to me. I don't have to work through anything. I'm amazing and you should invest in me. It's like, actually, no guys, here's what I'm working through and I share it openly. I mean, I, I share it like once I've gone through it, I don't necessarily share when I'm in the messy middle and I'm, <laughs> although sometimes it might, it, it sometimes that might happen as I'm working things out, but yeah, like I'm I'm sharing that, like my my check-ins, part of the bravery system and everything that I do, just yeah, that's that's sort of that's one of my things that I just feel is is a bit more authentic. And I, you know, and that's what I look for in the people who I follow who are like, hey, yeah, you know, like I struggle with stuff too. Here's what I've learned and here's what I'm working on. I think all coaches, we're all working on something, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Or we wouldn't even become coaches because Mm. we're all we're always in that learning Mm. space we're always learning more I think it's always a question of like it's always more awareness Mm. it's always developing more awareness and understanding of yourself Mm. so that you can help other people break through and have those shifts too Mm. and 
I think that's what makes a great coach is someone that continually does the work. I don't think that the work is ever done. I think that there's just a new level that you can play at. It's almost like, you know, gaming and then leveling up and be like, cool, like I can I can teach you how to complete the last level and yeah. I'm here now. And I think that your authenticity and your vulnerability really speaks to people, Tiff. And I I see that in you and I honor that so highly. I think it's really beautiful and really powerful. So thank you for being you because it is really, really powerful when we can share from essentially sharing from hindsight, like after you've gone through that messy middle, sharing and saying, this is what I kind of wish I had known. And if I can have a follow-up question, just because I love this. I would I would love to hear in those moments with with your dad when it was really challenging I wonder what you needed to hear Yeah yeah definitely and and like I do some work on this with like you know going in kind of like oh, being the parent that I needed at the time with the words that I needed and stuff like that in some of like my meditations and visioning and that sort of stuff. So yeah, definitely like in those times, it's just like, and, and I still have to say it to myself as an adult. It's like, actually like I have to unravel that stuff all the time because it's very easy to go to what is what you're used to thinking. And it's the, the types of things that I say to myself is like, okay, you have, like you have amazing strengths you are great at what you do you know like you like you are worthy just as you are like it's not like the numbers in your bank account don't make you a better person right like you are worthy you are loved you know you're you're amazing you have strengths yes those are things that that your father didn't see but that doesn't mean that they're not there and you can let them like show and let them yeah let them out into the world there we go <laughs> so yeah that's I love that that's stuff yeah because all of those things that you said about yourself are accurate oh thank you you're welcome <laughs> oh my gosh guys this has been an amazing conversation Rebecca and part of me wants to keep it going because I feel like oh hey we're on onto something but I know that we've been talking for so long and yeah, just there There were so many more questions that I wanted to ask that we didn't get the time to, but still, I think this has been an amazing insight into the changes you've made and why you've made them, your brave steps and, you know, the things that you've had to change. And I just really appreciate you sharing that and, you know, your unique approaches and your own vulnerabilities and all of that amazing stuff, all the stuff that inspires me. <laughs> and inspired me to get you back on the podcast I really appreciate your time is there any like last words like just to put you on the spot without really much of a question is there anything you would like to leave people with the a last message anything like that great non-question I think that from this conversation what I would hope people could take away is that alignment is just so key it's so key I I could not speak about that enough when you make the decisions that are in alignment with you who you are and what you want to create when it comes to your business it doesn't have to look like everyone else it can be whatever you want it to be because it's not anyone else's dream it's yours so I hope that people will take that away from this conversation and if there was a message, a bonus message that I could leave for everyone, it would be, please find yourself people to be in this with. The CEO crowd, of course, is here with open arms, but also Tiff has her community. And there are so many other communities that you could be a part of. Just never feel like you're in this alone because you're truly not. Mm -hmm. And I think to a degree, sometimes when we think we are alone, it's because we're choosing to be. There are other people that are there to be reached out to, to be sources of support for you. This doesn't have to be a lonely road of entrepreneurship that is just you burning yourself to the ground hustle culture. It can be 
a community, a collaborative effort that you can genuinely find so much joy in. Gosh, amazing, powerful words. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. For for those people who want to connect with you, where can they go to connect and all of that stuff? It'll of course be in the show notes, but for those people like me who don't read show notes, how do they find you? Yes. <laughs> I spend most of my time on Instagram and you'll find me at the CEO crowd on Instagram. We also have a podcast, a YouTube channel by the same name. And of course, please feel free to come to one of our upcoming networking events. The link for that genuinely will be in the show notes. You'll be able to find it on my Instagram too, but that might be something that you want a direct link for. And everyone, oh my gosh, is so welcome. We'd love to connect you with our community and see how we can best support you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rebecca. It's been amazing. Thank you so much, Tiff. I love just hanging out with you, girl. Thanks for listening to the Business Bravery Podcast. Has this episode inspired you to do something brave? Even if it's only send a difficult email, please share it with me on Instagram or other social media channels. Feel free to tag me at Tiffany G Studios. That's T-I-F-F-A-N-Y. G for golf, S-T-U-D-I-O-S, no spaces, no underscores, etc. Or you can use the hashtag business bravery podcast so that I can cheer you on and together we can inspire other coaches and course creators to do brave things in their business and life. Now I'm Tiffany and I'll leave you with this one last thing. What's one brave thing you're going to do today? It doesn't have to be big. Even the smallest steps can create the most massive results. So again, (laughs) feel free to share it with me either publicly or privately so that I can cheer you on. That's it from me. Until next time, bye for now.